Hey everyone, welcome back. So in the last lesson we took care of our header and I'm looking over this. We can go ahead and get rid of this RSS because we've already replaced it. And let's just clean this up just a bit. And we have our slogan. So let's move on. Now eventually we're going to be dividing up these pages, but I'm going to keep it on one page for now. And we're going to learn about the WordPress loop right now. I'm sure you've heard of it. So notice here how we had these post items and we've duplicated it. Well, we can get by with just one. So I'm going to get rid of those like so. All right, so let's begin. Within our primary section, we're going to start with the WordPress loop. So I'm going to type PHP if have posts, then while, don't worry, I'll go over this with you. Hmm. Okay, so this is the beginning of our WordPress loop, and we're, we're essentially saying these are WordPress functions. If there are posts to show, meaning if, if there are posts that were returned, then while there are posts, start this post to the function, and that, that gets us started, and then I use these colons, okay? So then we can close it out. This is the shorthand for writing in PHP. And we need to make sure that we close out our while statement and our if statement. So with the shorthand, we can do end while. And you can do this in any PHP application. And then we also need to close out our if statement. So end if. However, we should add some information. If have posts, what if uh, we don't have posts? We should probably echo something out, correct? So we can use an else, else statement. Else. And then we can add... Basically, with using the colon, that's the same as saying something like uh, else, then echo, and then echo some HTML or something like that. But by using the colon, we can close out and then just use regular HTML. Okay? And we can say else, um, p, not sure what you're looking for. All right? And then end our if statement. Okay, so if have post, while have post, the post, let's start with our, this section right here. Let's just cut that out, bring it in. Clean this up just a little bit. And we have our div with the class of post, we have our image. Now, obviously all of this stuff right here needs to be dynamic, it needs to be retrieving it. So for the image, I'm going to leave that off just for now because that gets a little more complicated when you're using custom fields. So for now, we'll leave that image as it is. But the H2, we are now in a WordPress loop. So it's reading through the database. And within this loop, we have access to certain functions. For example, with the H2 one, we can do PHP the title. Now if I come back to Firefox, Refresh the page. So, ah, syntax error on line 42. What did I forget? Looks like I left off one closing parentheses. Come back, try that again. And now this is dynamic and you can tell because it has the hello world. So we haven't changed the image, but we have changed the title. Pretty cool. Now, the way that works is because we are looping through each posting in our database, and the title is referring to the title for that posting, and then it displays all this, and then we're using a while statement, so it loops through again, and this time it's going to find the next posting, and the title will then refer to that title. So meta, meta we can get rid of this. And also, we should probably, before I continue on, shouldn't this link to the main posting? Yeah, it shouldn't just be the title. So why don't we uh, wrap it and we'll say, um, wrap it in anchor tags, like so. And the href, we're going to use some more PHP, and we're going to use something called the permalink, and that will be the link to that specific posting. See that. 
my third posting. Now we've wrapped it in an anchor tag, so the formatting has changed a bit because now it's picking up the anchor tags formatting. But if I click on this, you see it links us to that posting. So already we have a dynamic site that's linking us to new pages. And if I click on this logo, it brings us back. Pretty cool. Now one thing I've already seen is we're going to want to move that a logo up to get rid of that little roundness, but we can fix that later. So now let's continue on and working on the meta section. I'm going to write posted by the author. This is another WordPress function that returns the author of the posting. In this case, it's going to say admin and we'll say on what date was the posting made. We can write the date. It's very simple to understand, isn't it? That's why people love WordPress so much because it's very readable. Posted by the author on the date of the posting. Refresh the page. Posted by admin on April 14th, 2009. Pretty simple. Pretty great, actually. All right. So the next step is to replace this paragraph information. So. The way to replace it, get rid of that, is to type PHP the content. But I want to show you something when we do that. Save that, refresh the page, and now I'm going to notice it included this more. Because we included that little uh, symbol like this within our posting, it knows if you click on that, it allows us to add, uh, go to the continued section, which is right here. But I want to show you one other thing is if let's open up Firebug and we're going to inspect Firebug's a free program. You can Google and find it. Notice that we have after the meta, we have this opening and closing paragraph tag. And that's because when you call the content, it automatically wraps itself within paragraph tags. So I can get rid of that completely. OK. Save it, refresh the page. Now nothing's going to change, but it's going to clean up our code. And now you can see that that, that I'm sorry that that paragraph is um, is gone. Good. Let's close that out. Come back. Now, if you remember in our prototype, we had a little comment bubble that was right up here, and I said I wanted to wait to WordPress. Let's go ahead and add that in right now. So after the content, right here, let's add our div. So we'll do div, and there's going to be multiple of these divs on the page, so we can't give it an ID. We'll do class, num, comments. And num comments, and here we're going to have anchor tag. And within it, the value of this is going to be the number of comments that have been left. So it's going to be PHP comments underscore number. This is another WordPress function that's available uh, just doing a Google search for WordPress, uh, number of comments, it'll bring up. So don't feel like you have to memorize each one of these. Close that out. And the anchor tag, we need to make sure that we link to that as well. And that one is called comments underscore link. All right. Now we can pass in a few parameters here to comments number. Uh, we haven't set that up just yet because we don't have any comments. But you see there it says no comments. We can pass in three parameters, and the first one will be uh, if there are no comments, the next one will be if there's one comment, and then the third one will be if there's uh, X number of comments. But I don't want it to say no comments. I want it to either say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., etc. So within here, I'm going to type 0, 1, percentage sign, and that means if there's zero comments, it's just going to display zero. Let's refresh the page. And now, in fact, it does display zero. In the case that there's more than one, percentage sign represents uh, X, the number of uh, comments in. All right. The next step I want to do is I don't want this more to be formatted like it is. I want it to just say read more, perhaps. So let's go into the content. And as a parameter, we can type read more. Like so. And now it will replace the default section with whatever I typed in. There we go. Much better. Now we need to include uh, the more and previous links. So by default, it's set to uh, show, I think, seven or eight postings before it allows you more. Now, this is just an image that's statically added on. 
but I think if we want to, we'll come back to that. Let's go ahead and just write the coding. And that's going to be this section right here. So let's create a new div because we're going to have more than one link. So div ID equals more pre. There will only be one on a page at any given time. So I can stick with an ID. And I'm going to type in PHP next posts link. And once again, we can pass in what we want it to say. In this case, I'm going to write more. All right. And we'll do one more. PHP previous posts link. And we'll call this one uh, re return uh, mm, previous. I don't know. That's fine. So now that we've added that, we can get rid of this random link. Save. Now, nothing is going to show up by default, but if we go into here, and I may have to track it down, um, number of posts per page. Where is that going to be? Miscellaneous, maybe? Hmm. Probably in reading. Yeah, blog page shows at most. Let's change that to two just for this example. So save changes. And if I refresh the page, now you can see more. If I click on more, there aren't any more, so it allows me to go back to the previous. Or there are more, because it's only showing two per page. But we'll style those a little bit later. What I'm going to do is uh, come back to Coda. And you know what, I think that's good for this lesson. In the next one, we are going to separate index.php into three different files. We're going to separate it into header, the main section, and the footer. So I'll see you then.